Hey, what's up guys? Uh, Tom here from Positive Lead Diagnostics. A um, little bit different of a video here. I don't have a car. Um, this is actually one I did, I don't know, twice now. And I say twice because it was it came to the shop once and it had to leave and then it was brought back. But uh, it was a few months ago when I first looked at it and it recently came back, you know, in the previous week or so. Um, basically, the customer complaint was a check engine light. Oh, this is this is a 2006 Volkswagen Passat with a 3.6 liter. Uh, the vehicle came in. Customer complaint was a check engine light, and the fault stored was a P2293 fuel pressure regulator two performance. And for setting the criteria for this fault, I believe the, there's actually two for this fault. It's the P2293, there is a lower limit exceeded and an upper limit exceeded. Uh, the lower limit is usually caused by low fuel pressure and the upper limit is caused by high fuel pressure. Um, looking at my measure values, my data PIDs, um, my fuel rail pressure was at 120 bar. I'm not sure what that is in PSI. Uh, it's a lot. Uh, the spec for this vehicle is 40 to 50 bar at idle. I did some testing on this high pressure fuel pump. It is a ground side switched fuel pressure regulator on the pump. So I had good low side pressure and I was checking my circuitry to this fuel pressure regulator. I believe it's N276 on the high pressure pump and I was also looking at my fuel pressure sensor to make sure that it was reading accurately. Um, I borrowed a digital fuel gauge from a different shop and in fact my fuel pressure was that 120 bar was accurate. So I was looking into there being a problem with the high pressure fuel pump. So the high pressure fuel pump circuit for the N276 is a ground side switched solenoid. It comes from a fuse and it is ground side controlled by the engine computer. Looking at the duty cycle for for this um, N276 it was a on off square wave being that it's ground side switched the on time is actually when it is down at zero and when it's off is when it will be up high at 12 since it came from a fuse it was at 12 volts when it was off so looking at this square wave I determined that the computer was controlling this high pressure fuel pump to generate this high pressure there was no issue it was there was no issue with the pump no mechanical issue with the pump it was being commanded on by the engine computer so looking at the duty cycle, or looking at the square wave and calculating the duty cycle, I was able to determine that the ECM was controlling N276 at 90% and causing this high fuel pressure. So the question was, why was my fuel pressure so high? What input was my computer seeing that was saying, hey, let's, let's put an increase in this fuel pressure? All my inputs to the computer were looking good. And then I found out that this high pressure fuel pump was timed. All my inputs look good. I'm thinking computer problem. So I got some information. Um, this high pressure fuel pump is run by the timing chain and it is actually timed. So when you do the timing chain job, you would put your cam and crank marks up and you would also, there's a mark on the sprocket for this high pressure fuel pump and it has to be timed. I got a hold of some measure values for the timing. So measure values for the timing were 208 and 209 I believe. Let's see. Right, so 208 and 209. 208. Uh, is for the intake cam 
and 209 is for the exhaust cam. So the spec was negative 5 to positive 5, so within that range on, on both 208 and 209. So that's the spec would be <clears throat> plus or minus 5, anything in that range. So looking at these measured values, my 208, which is my intake cam, was at negative 7, and my exhaust cam 209 for my exhaust cam was at negative 4. So right there, it's out of spec. That's saying that my timing is out. If my timing is out on my cam and crank, then that would also put my timing off for my high pressure fuel pump. And maybe that would explain the high pressure at all times. I'm not sure what the computer looks at. Maybe it's these values. On this vehicle, the, uh, to, in order to check the timing, what you have to do is you have to pull the front end, pull the intake, and then pull the valve cover to check the timing. Um, and you know the customer would, would need to pay for that. So that was why the vehicle left. Um, it was basically, hey, we think it's out of time. And you know what we need to do is tear, tear the vehicle down and basically check it. So I didn't feel good giving the customer that kind of answer I wanted to know. But at the time, I didn't have a known good cam crank waveform for this engine. So even if I would have taken one, it wouldn't have done me any good. I didn't have anything to compare it to. So uh, the customer declined the teardown to check the timing and they took the vehicle. In the meantime, another one came in. This was maybe for an oil change or something else. Um, it was a known good. So I took the opportunity to take a waveform off of that one, just in case, just for my records, my peace of mind, whatever. Um, recently, the customer brought the vehicle back. Same complaint, you know, the check engine light. So uh, when the vehicle came back the second time around, um, it still had the P2293 fault stored. And in addition to that, it had a P0016 was a cam crank correlation fault. I did not have that the first time around. Um, that helps with the diagnosis as to definitely where I'm going and that we were heading in the right direction last time. So now that I have a known good cam crank, what I did was take another cam crank signal off of this car and compared the two. So I'll take you to the waveforms that I took. Once again, I apologize for not having this filmed. I wasn't able to film the car, but I just still feel like this is maybe some valuable information. I learned my lesson with this one. So uh, let me take you to the waveforms. Basically what you want to do is just get 720 of the crank on both your known good and your known bad and just compare the two. Find a spot where it's easy to compare them and see a difference. We're going to take a look at this first waveform that I took. This capture, this would be on the vehicle with the check engine light or the issue. Yellow trace is my crank. Green trace is my intake cam. The blue trace is my exhaust cam. And what you want to do when you're doing this is basically get uh, 720 degrees of the crank. So two rotations of the crank, one rotation of the cam, that's what you need. So we're going to use this crank sink right here. So one crank sink to the next is 360 degrees. To the next, 720. Two rotations of the crank, one rotation of the cam. And what I want to focus on is this leading edge right here in comparison to where this crank sink is. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit on that. Okay, so the, um, this leading edge on my intake cam looks to be maybe one tooth in from this crank sink 
And uh, just for this picture, we're going to use, let's say, this this blue trace, my exhaust cam. It's about one, two, three, four, five, five teeth away from this crank sink. So this is our known, this is my known good waveform. And same thing, you just want to get 720. So I want to zoom in. Let's see right here. And I don't know if you can tell, but already this waveform is different. This leading edge, this is, this green trace is my intake cam. It is dead center of this crank sink. Whereas in the known bad one was one tooth in. Let's see our exhaust. One, two, three, four, five. So the exhaust, relatively close. Intake cam, about one tooth off. So right here, this is what you need when you're comparing cam and crank signals. Um, you need a known good and a known bad waveform to compare. Um, on this vehicle, checking the timing would involve pulling the front end, involved pulling the intake manifold, involved pulling the valve cover. Customer didn't want to pay for that teardown. How much easier is this to do than tearing the whole vehicle down? And what if you think that the timing's out, you tear the whole vehicle down, and it's not even out of time? Known good, known bad, cam crank correlation. And this is what you need to compare the two. Right here, this verifies that my timing is out. Maybe a worn guide, maybe a stretch chain, maybe it's one tooth out. This right here tells me that my intake cam is out, which would also lead me to believe that my high pressure fuel pump is out and that would be the reason I have this excessive fuel pressure. Maybe the computer's looking at this 208 and 209 measured value and it's saying, you know what, you guys are out of spec. That means my fuel pump is out of time, so I'm gonna up this pressure. I'm not sure the strategy behind that, but this is what you need. Known good, known bad verified right there that the timing is out much easier than pulling this vehicle apart. So the thought was with this vehicle, for me, you know, the vehicle being out of time was out of the question for me. I just, I didn't believe it. How do you have a fuel rail pressure sensor that is an input to the computer and that is what the computer uses to base the duty cycle to this fuel pressure regulator to adjust the fuel pressure in the rail? You have... You have a computer that is sending out a 90% duty cycle. The computer is causing the issue. Um, so I was against timing the entire time. I just didn't believe it. It didn't make sense. I didn't have any drivability issues. My fuel pressure sensor was reading correctly. I verified that with the digital fuel gauge. It was 120 some bar 120 to 122 bar at idle and that is what the gauge read that is what my fuel pressure sensor was reading why would the computer be commanding a 90 percent duty cycle the computer is causing this issue so i i thought it was a computer problem i had no other input issues everything else was looking good my fuel pressure sensor which you would believe that that is the main input for this solenoid duty cycle, I thought it was a computer problem. So I found a used computer for, uh, I can't remember, it was, it was relatively cheap. It was maybe 50, 100 bucks. Um, I wanna say 50. Um, so we got the used computer, I programmed it, put it in, it did not fix the car. It did not fix the car. So to me, this is, 
This system strategy is ridiculous. It is ridiculous that timing is what is going to fix this vehicle. It just, it does not make sense. What would be the point of having a computer controlled solenoid to adjust the fuel pressure in the rail based on the fuel rail sensor, the fuel pressure sensor in the rail. If timing is out on this high pressure fuel pump, if that throws this entire system off, what is the point in having a computer controlled solenoid to adjust fuel pressure? Or what is the point in having an input to the computer on what the rail pressure is if it's totally going to ignore it when there is an issue with this high pressure fuel pump lobe being out of time. Just does not make sense. How important was the cam and crank waveform on this car? It was very important, but I think more of um, to hit the nail on the head is how ridiculous this strategy is. Um, high pressure fuel pump being out of time causing excessive fuel pressure and the computer is commanding it. Not sure of that strategy but be on the look for that uh, in the near future. Excessive fuel pressure, possible timing issue, um, not a rail pressure problem, not a computer problem, a timing issue. Hope you guys can find this video informational. I hope it helps you in the future if you ever get one of these. Uh, one more thing, don't forget, check out my cousin Mike, uh, PSK Performance. He just started his own YouTube channel, some uh, short videos right now, but um, you have to start somewhere, so go check that out for him. I will try to link his video on this one. So check that out. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy this video. I know it's a little different. Let me know what you think. So, thanks for watching.